Hello, uh, my name is Bruce Anderson. I'm CEO of 24-7 Solar. I'm really excited to be here today to show you something that I find fascinating after all I invented it or helped to. Um, and uh, they're called 24-7 Solar Microgrids. Uh, and uh, yeah, uh, here we go. Um, I'm going to show you uh, uh, how you can optimize renewables for, for mines. So, you know, the problem is that we're all under pressure to reduce greenhouse emissions. At least we should feel it. Um, the long-term target, of course, is no emissions, uh, but it's hard. It's really, really hard, especially for mines and especially for off-grid mines. So I'm gonna help you. I'm gonna show you how you can maximize renewables and maximize fuel savings, reduce carbon emissions, achieve 80 to 90% renewables just in a straightforward way and get a, give, show you a clear path to get into 100% and eliminate your gensets and compare the economics with other technology options. So I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna start off by showing you a 24 seven solar plant. Now this is a product that operates as a base load, 24 seven solar, sort of like a genset. We've taken a super highly reliable, best selling, a uh, small gas turbine, and we've modified it so that it can produce electricity strictly from high temperature, ambient pressure, hot air. Pretty remarkable. Now we've started the operation of these uh, modified turbines with hot air from the sun. At the top of a 35 meter tower is what we call a solar 24 seven solar receiver. Sits there, no moving parts. There are heliostats on the ground, which are these uh, mirrors that track the sun and reflect all their light up into the solar receiver. Inside the solar receiver, the air is heated to almost a thousand degrees centigrade. And then some of that hot air goes down and powers the turbine and some of it goes to power or gets stored in our thermal battery. So this thermal battery is like a silo. It's about nine meters tall and it's filled with these tons of small pellets made out of ceramic. And so some of that air comes down from the solar receiver, goes through the top of this storage system, go, passes through it, heats these pebbles. There's a lot of insulation around this tank. And then at night, the airflow reverses through this storage system to power the turbine. Now here's how it works, pretty simple. During the day, the sunlight is reflected from these heliostats up onto the receiver. And then it gets very hot in there, <laughs> really, really hot. The air, for, uh, the cooler air from the storage system and the turbine uh, go up uh, through ducts, pass through the solar receiver, and they come out, it comes out heated at about 970 C. Some of it, like I said, goes to the thermal storage system right here for use at night. And some of it goes down here to power the turbine uh, during the day. And then at night, the airflow reverses. Uh, the exhaust from the turbine, instead of going up to the receiver, goes to the bottom of the thermal storage system and then comes back and powers the turbine. So these, this plant, this 24 seven solar plant is a product like a handset or a wind machine. Uh, they're standardized, they're all identical, uh, 400 kilowatt capacity. They require um, between one and a half and two hectares, um, roughly five acres. Um, and they look like this. Uh, now, that's, I said 400 kilowatts, eventually they'll be larger sizes. Right now it's 400 kilowatts. But we can put a bunch of these together over rough terrain, doesn't have to be perfectly flat. And the redundancy gives you extremely high reliability. I mean, even a single, even a single system is reliable. One, because 
the turbines are reliable, extremely so, and two, because we have two turbines per system. So the reliability is very, very high. And they're easy to operate. They require very little routine maintenance, long MTBFs. Um, and they're, they're, they're such nimble uh, power generators that they start up quickly, they adjust their output quickly to changing demand, and um, they add an enormous amount of resilience to a power generation system. So now I'm gonna tell you about 24 seven solar microgrids. A lot of you are familiar with microgrids. Uh, you usually start off with your gensets, and then you add some PV, then you might add some batteries. And um, for those of you who have such systems, I don't need to tell you about the challenges associated with combining PV and batteries with gensets, but um, that is one form of microgrid. What we do is the same thing, except we use 24 seven solar plants instead of gensets. So it's 24 seven solar plants plus PV or wind um, plus batteries. And not a lot of batteries, very few. So it's not, it's not as expensive as a typical uh, microgrid with batteries. And so, so those variable systems are intermittent. You can't count on them. You don't know when they're gonna happen and how much. Um, and so entering now is the solar plant. This operates all the time. Provides a base load, steady 24 seven output, uh, no mess, no fuss. Um, it also offer, um, offers uh, this industrial grade heat. Uh, with enough of them, you can eliminate all your gensets. To get to uh, 80 or 90% clean energy, you can use our plants. Uh, they're designed to be able to burn uh, fuel if needed as a backup. And so to get to that final 100%, you can burn emissions-free fuels such as hydrogen or some biofuels. And this is what they look like. They're pretty simple. You have their, your uh, PV field, maybe a wind machine or two. Um, uh, oh, don't forget about the sun. Uh, you got the batteries, the inverter, central controller, and of course, the 24 seven solar plant. So I'm gonna, um, this um, high content slide uh, you don't really need to pay a lot of attention to the words. What it's doing is on a wide range of categories and characteristics, comparing our plants with our microgrid to a conventional microgrid. And please contact me if you'd like a copy of this presentation, but right now just focus on the color. Green is good, red is bad. Uh, there are just so many ways that these microgrids can improve your life compared with conventional diesel microgrids. Um, and again, they offer this path to 100% renewables. So what I'm going to show you applies to uh, Western Australia, an off-grid mine there. And the pathway has four steps. PV to get to 20, 25% uh, renewables, um, add some batteries, you get to 25 to 40, uh, get up to 80 or 90, you use solar plants, and then you burn uh, non-emitting uh, uh, emissions uh, fuels for the balance of it. So this is a visual way of describing the same thing. This is the CapEx in millions. Uh, this is renewables in percentages. And um, we, we start off trying to get to 100% and our CapEx, of course, increases. For PV only, you get to a low, the lower range, uh, PV plus uh, batteries, you get up here, but diminishing returns fairly quickly. And uh, you know now here you're at 35, 40%. The way to get up that curve is to deploy lots of solar plants or one at a time as you retire gensets. And then of course you get to the 100% mark with um, your biofuel or, or hydrogen. How about the cost? Well, 
what this does is compare just the diesel to the 24 seven solar plant because it makes the assumption that your PV and batteries basically remain the same for both microgrids. So we just take those out of the equation. And again, we're assuming Western Australia, lots of sunshine, uh, high cost of, uh, of diesel, and a 20 year life. 24-7 uh, solar is actually designed for much longer life than that, 20, 25 to 40 years. Um, the, uh, here's the comparative CapEx, uh, CapEx over 20 years. Uh, and here's, it's what the fuel cost that the difference really is telling. Because the fuel cost for the 24-7 solar microgrid uh, is roughly 20% that of diesel. And, the, and then there's non-fuel non costs of operating the system. And as you can see here, uh, the, um, the total annual cost of operating this system is about a third of a, of a diesel microgrid. So these are characteristics, um, just to sort of to summarize things. You've got 24-7 solar opera, 24-7 operation um, and up to 100% renewables. Uh, we can eliminate gensets. Uh, this, this system is very interoperable. Uh, it will operate very, very smoothly, even among a variety of power technologies. It handles surge loads very, very well, and most of you have surge loads at your mines. Uh, they're easy to operate, high reliability, and scalable to any required capacity. And they also offer heat. Um, now, uh, a lot of you don't need heat at your mine, but if you do, this can offer you industrial grade heat up to 1000 C or um, at a, uh, and that's not with, without very little electricity, by the way, from our system. It's a modified system. But if you want our basic system with electricity and heat, uh, you get a ton of it. Uh, 1.3 megawatts per one megawatt of electric. And it's about 250 C, so it's very, very useful. Uh, heating water, uh, steam boilers, um, absorption chilling, uh, wastewater treatment, product drying, product finishing, uh, HVAC absorption chilling, there you go. Uh, so in sort of a final summary, uh, solar microgrids optimize renewable energy power uh, for mines, up to 100% renewables, adds flexibility and versatility to your operation. Highly reliable engines here. It can be deployed quickly, gradually, replacing gensets in an orderly way, uh, delivered as a fully operational turnkey system. And when you're done with it, you can move it to other locations. A little bit about the company. Our origins are MIT. And MIT owns part of it. So does the state of Massachusetts in the United States, as well as other investors. Um, the Department of Energy invested six million in, in the development of, 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 the, uh, of the system. And we have great global partners who've just been tremendous, frankly. So a 24 seven solar microgrid, we believe it's an ideal clean off-grid solution um, if you agree and you're interested in talking, please contact me down here. And, um, and that's it. Thank you very much. I appreciate your attention and look forward to talking to you. Bye-bye.